Hello, welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen we have a puzzle by Shinya uh, for you. Now he's featured on the channel twice before. Real name is Thomas Butner. And um, yeah, he emailed me a couple of days ago to suggest we might like to take another look at this puzzle. And uh, unusually, this puzzle's actually um, a reissue of a puzzle that appeared on Logic Masters Germany uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I think, and it had five stars out of five for difficulty. Very, very hard puzzle. And Thomas has found a way, he says, of um, making it slightly easier, but more elegant. And that's what we're going to have a look at today and see how it goes. Um, should be quite a straightforward rule set today. So what we've got is uh, normal Sudoku rules. We've got some killer Sudoku cages in the grid. So obviously uh, these cages, they need to sum up or the numbers in the cage need to sum up to the digit in the top left hand corner without repeating a digit. And then we have little killer Sudoku clues outside the grid. So you can see, let's look at this one, 30. So that's telling us along that arrow there, those six cells have to sum up to 30. And the key thing to remember with these is you can repeat digits along um, along the arrows. I mean, obviously those two squares can't be the same digit because they're in the same three by three box, but it's absolutely fine for that one to be the same as that one, or that one to be the same as that one, etc. Um, and that's all there is. So do have a go at this. Um, click on the link under the video to play along. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, in fact, this 30 cage here is where I'll start because 30 in four cells has to be six, seven, eight, and nine. 28 is quite large, but not large enough to be to tell us anything certain. We, we know there's an, always an 8 and a 9 in a 28 cage. Um, but that's all we know. Right, okay. So this quite often happens with advanced uh, little killer Sudokus, um, because compilers have got better and better at sort of hiding things in the grid. And normally what they do is that they use the geometry of the arrows to tell us something new. My phone is buzzing at me. It's predictably Mark. We'll ignore Mark. Um, now. Yeah, so there, there is. There are arrows. Look at this. This is lovely. This is lovely. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. So we've got four arrows outside the grid here that are highlighting the yellow squares. But why is this interesting? Well, these arrows do not overlap. So now we can do some arithmetic and find out some things about, about the grid. So if we add up the, the boxes, the two by two boxes, what have we got? We've got 40, we've got 98 the boxes. Now if on the other hand we add up the arrows, so we've got 30, 61, 93, what's that? 61, 83, 106. So what did I say the other one was? 98. So I've got, I've got to find, right, so that means that the cells that don't overlap between the arrows and the boxes have to add up to eight. So that's these cells here that I'm highlighting. So those squares have to add up to eight. So, you, well, yeah, okay, this is good because these two squares can't have the same digit in them. So the minimum I could make those two squares would be one and two. The minimum I could make those two squares is one and two. So that's already six. These two have to therefore be one. If these are one and two, which is what they have to be. That one can't be a one anymore. Same thing here. Look, these are one and two. That's got to be a two. That's got to be a one. And we are off and running. And we can put a one in the middle of the grid by Sudoku, look. Now I think I can get rid of the highlighting. I'm not sure. Oh no, that's, that's a terrible misclick. Okay, there we go. Now, let's have a look. Let's have another stare at this. So, two twos, look. Oh, and ones. These twos and ones on this box force a one and a two into this 20 cage. If there's a one and a two in the 20 cage, the other two digits have to add to 17. So they're one, two, eight, and nine. 
So we've got 8 and 9 locked into column 1 and column 2 now in box 4 and box 7. So, so where do the 8s and 9s go in column 3 of the grid look? They're going to have to go in these two cells. Sixteen in four cells when you can't include a one. Well, you have to include a two. There must be a two in one of those four cells there. Uh, Thirteen here and eleven more. So that's twenty-four. So those three squares have to add up to twenty-one. How do I know that? Well, that's because every... Um, box in a Sudoku, every 3x3 three three box will contain the digits 1 to 9. If you add those up, you get 45. The 28 cage can't contain a 2, so the 2 must live up there in this box because of the 2 there. Two, ah, okay, and 2 must be in one of those two positions in this box because of this 2. So 2 in the central box must be in one of those two cells. Oh, we can put a 1 in here, because, and that's because a 13 cage in 4 cells has to have a 1 in it. If you add 2, 3, 4 and 5 together, you get 14. So that's got to be a 1 because of these two 1s. Unfortunately, though, we... Oh! No, we do. Look, I was going to say that we don't know that there has to be a 2 in there because 3, 4 and 5 add up to 12. But look, there's 2s here and here. So these three squares can't contain a 2. So they have to be 3, 4 and 5 in order to make the box add up. OK. Oh, well, now we can revisit this 11 clue. Because the 11 clue now can't be 3, 8, 4, 7, or 5, 6. So that's got to be 2, 9. Those three squares have got to be 6, 7, and 8. Nines. Nines are now locked into the same two rows of the grid. In rows 1 and 2, we found the nines in box 1 and box 3. So where does the 9 go in box 2? It's got to be in one of those two cells. So we've actually done quite a lot of Sudoku off the back of that little maths there. I'm running out of ideas though now. So the 20, this 28 cage, we need 11 more. So it's either going to be 4, 7 or 5, 6. 31 clue here. So there's a 2 on this diagonal. So the yellow squares on the diagonal have to sum up to 29. Now if all of those were in the same row, that would be quite easy because we could just write in 5, 7, 8 and 9. But because they are not, they don't even share a box, we, we've got to be a bit careful. So if 31 so, if these were as high as possible, they could be 17. That would mean these two squares had to add up to 12. Those two squares, therefore, have to, would, would be 12 in that instance. But this has to be 12 or less, because I simply can't make those two any bigger than 17. So these are 12 or less. 12, um, 14... Ah, ah, okay, so if these are 12 or less, let's look at this 30 clue. Because that means those four squares, oops, those four squares there have got to be 14 or less. So these have to be 16 or more, therefore they have to include a 9. And they're either going to be 7, 9 or 8, 9, so they can't include a 6. So the 6 is in one of the two other positions. So this is this is 14 or 13 in this direction. So there's no obviously there's no 9 in this direction. That's the corollary of there being a 9 in that direction. So 
So this is 13 or 14. So this adding in the two, that's 15 or 16. So this has to be seven or eight, which unfortunately Fortunately, I don't think I know how to. Feels like there should be something I can do there because obviously one can't in be included, but I don't think there is. So this is seven or eight. So in this direction, therefore, we've either got eight or nine. <laughs> so let's add in the two ones and that gives us 10 or 11. Ah, ah, okay, so we're coming back into this box, aren't we, with 10 or 11, so this is 12 or 11 in along this diagonal, so if that's the case, along this diagonal, we've got the same restriction we had over there. On this diagonal, these two, these two yellow squares have to either be 8 and 9, or 7 and 9 which is the same as we got from there. I just didn't, I wasn't thinking about this box at the time. So there's definitely a nine in one of those two squares. There's not a nine in one of those two squares. These two squares are seven, eight, and nine in some order. Okay, now has that helped me? <laughs> um, I'm sure it has. I just don't quite know how yet. No, I really am not sure. Um, oh, I tell you what we could do though. Now, we could have done this before actually. Look, nines. Nines in box three and box six are locked into the last two columns of the grid. So there must be a nine in one of these two positions in box nine. And that marries up with the nines over there. So we've got, we keep getting this same idea. It's lovely. So uh, row eight and row nine, we now know the nines are locked into box seven and box nine. So where are we going to put our nine in row seven of the grid? It's got to be in one of those two cells. Now... Does that help us? Yes, that does. That helps us a little bit because now we got to, we can think about the two here. Where does the two go in this box? Is it possible the two goes in the twenty-four cage? Well, it's not anymore because if there's no nine in the twenty-two gate twenty-four cage, you can't make twenty-two in three digits. So if I try to put a two there. These three cells have to add to 22. You can't do that without a nine. So the two shifts over there. That gives us a two here. Two's not there now. So two's in one of these two positions. Ah, okay. So let's carry on on this box again. So now there is no 9 in the 24 cage. Is there an 8 in the 24 cage? Well, if there isn't an 8, we'd have to make 24 from 7, 6, 5 and some other digit that's high enough. But 7, 6 and 5 add up to 18. So we, we'd have to repeat a digit in order to get to 24. Ergo, there is an 8 in here. Now that's interesting to me because there's 8s now locked into row 8 and 9 of the grid in these two boxes. <laughs> so there must be an eight in one of those two squares. Oh, good, we've got it again. This is really beautiful construction. This really is because now in columns eight and nine, we've locked the eights into position in box six and box nine. So there cannot be um, any eights in those positions. So the eight in column seven can only be in this square. That's not a seven anymore, look, because of the six, seven pair up there. Oh, but the eight gives us an eight there as well. Eight, nine. Oh, that gives us an eight, nine pair in box two. 
and the 9 fixes that this must be a 2 and a 9 now. So this, this square has to be an 8, and that has to be a 9, because there had to be a 9 on that diagonal. So this is an 8 now through Sudoku. Oopsie. Um, the 2 fixes the 2 there, look. It's got to be in this cell. This square, we know these two squares now. Well, we've got 17, so these two have to add up to 11. Um, so they're going to need one of the digits will have to be a 6 or a 7, and it can't be this one. So this square's got to be a 6 or a 7. This square's got to be a 4 or a 5. Two here fixes that this is a 2, obviously. Uh, now, ah, let's have a look. This diagonal is now fixed, isn't it? Because I've got 17, 19 on it. I need 12 more. Oh, this is huge. This is huge because now if I need 12 into those two squares, I also need those two squares to add up to 12. Now, why is that important? Well, A, I can see it's going to give me a 7, 9 pair there. But also... How are we going to make 12 twice without using a 9? These have to be have to be 5, 7 and 4, 8 in some order. So we can actually write that in. Now, does that help us with anything? Golly, I thought that would really be useful. Oh, well, let's... Let's look at this, because we know if these add up to 12, 12, 13, 14, these have to add up to 16. There's a 30 clue there, uh, that's why. So we can't include an 8 there. This is a 7, 9 pair. So this becomes a 6, 8 pair. 6 and 8 add to 14, 15, 16. So those add up to 7 without using a 1 or a 2. Right, so these are 3 and 4. So in order to make this box work, that's got to be a 7 look. That's nice, that fixes the 6 and the 7 over there. 7s now, we'll use our trick again. 7s are locked into columns 1 and columns 2 in boxes 1 and 4. So 7s have got to live in those cells. This has got to be 6 by Sudoku. Look, that's the only place a 6 can go. So that's got to be 5 by Sudoku. There's no 5 down there. So if there's no 5 down there, there's no 7 down there. Because we obviously know these diagonals are adding up to 12. Um, Could be a one over in this corner somewhere. This is a one, three, four, triple to complete row one of the grid. The eight here sees this six, eight pair on this side. So that's got to be six, that's got to be eight. There's no eight down there now. Where does 6 go in the top box? It has to go in this position, I think. So that shifts it over into column 3 in box 7. The 6 here sees the 7 there. We know these two had to add up to 11, so that's got to be a 4. The 7 come, bounces back over there and gives us a 9 over here. There's no 9 down there now. So this becomes a 1-2 pair. This must be an 8-9 pair. The seven fixes the seven. It's all, all coming together. Sevens must be in one of those two squares by Sudoku. Eight, nine, one, two. So this, this, this must be the one. Um, 
4, look, this 4 forces a 4 into one of those two squares. So that forces a 4 into one of those two squares. Ah, runs out of room there. Oh, we've got six digits in row 5 of the grid. We're missing 3, 4 and 5. All right, so I'll, I'll pencil them all in, but you can see why this is nice. Look. We've got a three, four, five triple now in column seven of the grid. That can't be a four actually there. So what is it? We're missing a six, aren't we, over here? Oops. Can't see how to get that. Um, but. Let's use this 3, 4, 5 triple then. This square's got to be a 6 because it can't be a 3 or a 5. That gives us a 3, 5 pair here. Locks a 6 into one of those two squares. Now, looking at this column, look, we've not placed a 7 in it yet. So the two squares at the bottom have to be a 7, 9 pair. These squares have got to be 1, 3 and 5. And those squares have got to be 4 and 6. And we need three, four, and five along here as well. And three, four, five here. Okay, so I don't want to get too cluttered with pencil marks if we can avoid it. Let's try and spot something now. So what do I need to be seeing here? Ah, yes, sevens. Look, we've got this trick again, <laughs> this time involving sevens. So the sevens in this box and this box are locked into row eight and nine of the grid. So there can't be any more sevens in row eight and row nine. This has to be a seven. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be terribly useful because sevens are pretty well mapped out in this puzzle. This square's got to be a 3, 4, or a 5, because the 6 is locked down there. Surely I can do something with the 9. In... No, I can't quite place it in the middle box. Oh, there's something, look. These two squares have got to be th 2 of 3, 4, and 5. So these two squares, because these can't be 3, 4, or 5, these also have to be two of the digits 3, 4, and 5. So that creates a triple in this column, which means this must be the 2, which I could have got anyway, actually, if I just focused on my pencil marks. This also gives me a 3, 4, 5 pair across here, though. So these two squares have got to be 6 and 9, and that is resolvable. So we go 6, 9. That's not 9 anymore. This must be the 6 by Sudoku. This must be the 9 by Sudoku. That gets the 9 and the 8 sorted out. So there can't be a 4 over here now. So we've got we've either got 4, 8 or 5, 7 in these diagonals. This 4, 5 pair fixes the 3, 4 at the top. That's going to be nice. 3, 5 pair here fixes the 4 down this side. It's the, the geometry of this puzzle is really quite stunning. It just is gorgeous. Um, this has got to be a 3 or a 5. Uh, where's the next easy win? Is there an easy win? Yeah, this square has got to be a 7 by Sudoku. It can't be a 4 or a 5. Still need to put an 8 in the central. Oh. Yeah, there's a 7 8 pair here. So this is an 8. This is 3 4 or. F ah, that forces the 5 to come into this square because of the 5 at the top. That forces the 4 and the 3 and the 5 and the 4 and the 3. 3 5 3. 
but you can see the 4 and the 5 are fixed, the 5 and the 3 are fixed. That's got to be a 3, that's got to be a 5. Oh, okay, so we're going to... Ordinarily, I'd be deeply concerned about this puzzle at this point because it looks like it's broken in the sense that you can't actually fill in anything. Um, you know, how do you disambiguate this trail along the bottom two rows of the grid? But in this puzzle, it's fine because we've got a nine clue here, so that can't be a one anymore. Uh, uh, and we've got a 31 clue here and a 30 clue here. Ah, oh, but these, these are just dealing with the 12s. That's no use at all. I need something better. There must be, yeah, it's this 5. <laughs> the 5 The five fixes that this is, a, this is a 3, so that's a 1. Now, hopefully, that will be enough to get us to be able to disambiguate this 12 cage. Let's see. So the 2, the 1. Uh, what else? Surely I need more. Ah, yeah, the nine now. As this is a three, this becomes a six. Six of five, five and four. That's a four. And we're left with this seven, eight, nine deadly pattern, which will be disambiguated by the fact we need those two to add up to 12 and these two to add up to 12. So seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, seven. I can't see what that says. Yes, it says it's, it's correct which is good news. So I hope you enjoyed that lovely puzzle today. My goodness, there was some geometry in that. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.